Hey friends, it's John, your carnivore teacher alpha, and today we're talking about something nearly everyone uses, not everyone, but a lot, coffee. If you're a coffee drinker, this video may completely change how you enjoy it and how your body responds to it. Coffee itself is not the enemy. In fact, if you tolerate it well, coffee can fit into a proper human diet. But timing, quantity, and mineral interference absolutely do matter. Let's break this down the right way. Why timing your coffee matters. Most people drink coffee too early, before their brain and hormones are actually ready for it. Here's the key. Cortisol naturally peaks 30 to 60 minutes after waking up. This is your built-in alarm clock. Drinking coffee during this cortisol surge does two things. It increases the cortisol spike, which can heighten anxiety or jitteriness. It reduces caffeine's effectiveness because you're stacking a stimulant on top of a natural stimulant. So the best time to drink coffee is 90 minutes after waking. Just find something to do. This gives your cortisol time to naturally peak and decline, and then your morning coffee lifts you gently instead of spiking you. For people on the proper human diet who already have stable blood sugar, this timing works even better. Now, how much coffee is ideal? Most people don't need as much caffeine as they think. One or two cups of coffee in the morning is totally fine for most healthy adults. That looks like eight to 16 ounces of brewed coffee, which is 80 to 200 milligrams of caffeine total. If you're sensitive to caffeine, lean toward one cup. If you're highly tolerant, two cups is reasonable. But here's the key. Your caffeine should stay in the morning window only. Drinking coffee too late in the day disrupts sleep architecture. Even if you fall asleep just fine, caffeine blocks adenosine receptors for hours. And even 100 milligrams taken at noon can reduce deep sleep later that night. So the rule is caffeinated coffee, morning only. Decaf coffee, optional in the afternoon or evening if you enjoy it. Just make sure your decaf is the Swiss water method processed to avoid chemical residues. Should you switch to decaf later in the day? Yes, I say yes. If you want to preserve your sleep, your cortisol rhythm, and your next day energy, you should do that. Here's how I suggest structuring your coffee intake. In the morning, 90 minutes after you wake up, caffeinated coffee, one or two cups max. Midday, ideally no coffee, let your adrenal glands rest. Late afternoon or evening, if you want coffee or flavor or the ritual, decaf only. Now decaf does have a small amount of caffeine, eight to 15 milligrams, but that's negligible. This pattern respects your circadian rhythm, your nervous system, and your sleep cycles. Now we're gonna talk about coffee and anti-nutrients. You wanna protect your iron and your magnesium. This is a big one, pay attention. Coffee, even black, even organic, contains polyphenols, tannins, acids. These compounds bind to minerals and reduce absorption, especially iron, magnesium, zinc, and calcium. This does not mean coffee is harmful, it just means you need to space it correctly. Here's the rule. Keep a one to two hour buffer between drinking coffee and eating mineral rich foods or supplements. So if you're having a steak and eggs or magnesium supplements, make sure coffee is not sitting on top of them. You know, like two hours before, two hours after or during, don't have coffee in that window, whether it's caffeinated or decaffeinated, because we're talking about polyphenols here. So coffee, wait one to two hours, meals or supplements. This prevents mineral binding and ensures maximum absorption, especially with heme iron and supplemental magnesium. For carnivores, this is especially important because you rely on animal iron. You avoid plant-based magnesium sources. Your mineral intake should be absorbed optimally. A single spacing strategy solves all of this. You could still drink your coffee. 
Should you drink coffee on an empty stomach? If you're fasting, which you do, black coffee is fine for most people as long as it doesn't trigger stress or jitters. Some people get acid stomach, shakiness, cortisol spikes, anxiety, and if that's you, move your coffee after your first meal. If you feel great fasting with coffee, drink it in the morning window and keep it black or with a small amount of animal fat if desired. All right, what about combining coffee with milk or cream? A lot of people do that. This is where some people sabotage their results. Dairy can spike insulin, trigger cravings, stall weight loss, cause inflammation, and some people mislead you into drinking more than you need. If you tolerate dairy and it doesn't affect your weight, energy, or skin, small amounts are fine. But if you're struggling with appetite or fat loss or cravings or bloating or afternoon crashes, try switching to black coffee or coffee with no dairy for 30 days. Most people see a huge improvement. Let's bring all of this together. Here's the simple proper human diet guide to coffee. Drink your first cup 90 minutes after waking. Better cortisol rhythm, better energy. Limit your caffeine to the morning, one to two cups max. Switch to decaf later in the day, protects your sleep. Space the coffee one to two hours away from meals and away from supplements because that will protect your iron and your magnesium absorption. Avoid dairy if it disrupts your health and weight loss. Test yourself. Drink it black if possible, clean, simple, no hormones, no additives. Coffee is not the enemy. Timing and dosing are keys. When you respect your hormones, minerals and circadian rhythm, coffee can fit beautifully into a healthy animal-based lifestyle. Now I know I'm gonna get a lot of negative comments from the hardcore carnivores. I even made a coffee stopping video way back when I used to dye my beard dark. <laughs> you see the video, I look different. Say what you will, this video was about if you drink coffee and you don't want to stop drinking coffee and you like your coffee, how to drink your coffee, when to drink your coffee and about that mineral absorption issue. That's what this video is about. I wanted to make a video for people who drink coffee. This is a, the best way to do it. If you found this helpful, pass it on to other coffee drinkers who are carnivore or not. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share this video like I asked, and uh, leave me a question, a comment, a suggestion, respectfully, <laughs> don't hate me for telling you to drink coffee, carnivores. I'm not saying drink it, I'm saying when and how, if you're going to. Have a great day.